Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this beautiful sunny Sunday morning. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, uh, this weather this weekend has been an absolute joy. I hope everyone has had a chance to uh, please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the Son, Jesus the Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. We come to worship God the Spirit, the Advocate, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, to Almighty God, Father and Holy Spirit, be blessing and honor, glory and par forever and ever. Our first hymn is number 96 in the ENR. I should say that our first and last hymns are Advent songs. Um, our readings today, today has to, to do with the second coming of Christ, of the, of, the, of the Advent of Christ, the first coming of Christ. Advent song. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. And we use confession number two. Father, we have, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those saints which we ought to have done, and we have done those saints. Lord, have mercy upon us. O God, who confess their sins, 
Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Lord, have Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, upon us. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Unto as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven. Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that, having this hope, as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from last week, we, or last week of the week before, actually the week before last, we read about the death of Moses on Mount Nebo as he was looking out over the promised land that to which he had led his people, which he was allowed to see, but in, into which he was not allowed to journey. And so today, and so now we have a transition. Um, we're actually near the uh, when the uh, people are preparing to enter the promised land. Joshua chapter uh, verse 3 and then verses 14 to 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and suffer, summoned the elders the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord." Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. 
But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord, that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Our psalm this re- reading this morning, we will read responsively, is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell them to the coming generation. The glorious deeds of God, we will tell of God's might and the wonders that God has done. God established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which, which God commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn that they may rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget God's works, but keep God's commandments. Our next reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 to 18. And Paul is writing, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And finally, our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew's gospel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. And this is Jesus speaking. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went in to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy, buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, 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 open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here end our scripture readings for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word.
our next hymn is oh, hymn number 369 keep your lamps trimmed and burning it's it's based on our passage for uh, on the passage we read from Matthew Um, we uh, please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come, the judge, the quick, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, we will, we, we come now to our time of prayer. Um, we want to pray, uh, today is, uh, Wednesday is, is Veterans Day, 
Um, and in, in uh, recognition of that, I wanted to read a uh, Re- Veterans Day, of course, began as, as Armistice Day. Um, it was a uh, uh, remembering the end of World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. And so I wanted to read a, a poem uh, from, from that war. In Flanders fields, the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break break faith with us who die, we will not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And so we remember our veterans on this Veterans Day. Uh, We also uh, remember uh, those in authority. Uh, We pray for their, we pray for their guidance. Um, we want to continue to uh, keep uh, Troy McLaughlin, uh, Saren Cobble in prayer, uh, Joseph Roberts. Um, please pray for, uh, please, please also pray for D, um, for, for, for Alan and uh, Donald Babnew. Um, And, 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 and others that are, that are known in our hearts. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks as you led Joshua and as Joshua led the people of Israel into the land of promise. We give you thanks for guiding us through this past week. Uh, certainly uh, an eventful week for some a week of joy for some a week uh, a, a week of sorrow uh, but it is, it is the week that you gave us and so we give you thanks for it we pray for all who have passed from this life um, those who have died from the pandemic and those who have died from other causes. Eternal rest grant them O Lord and light perpetual shine upon them and we pray Lord that you, we pray in this, during this pandemic spike, that you would, that you would bring an end to the pandemic. Uh, please be with us, uh, please be with all who are fighting it in medicine and, and research. We pray for all who are struggling with illness of body or mind. Uh, grant them healing, guide the doctors and nurses working for their healing and lay your own hand on them for you are the great physician. We pray, especially, uh, we pray for Troy, for Sarah, for Alan, for Donald. Uh, We pray for Aaron, for Eric. Uh, We pray for Carmela and for Al, who is caring for her. Uh, We pray for Aid and Jeff and and baby Mila. Um, We pray pray also for uh, Katie, uh, who, uh, who was hospitalized with heart, uh, with heart problems. Uh, please pray for Katie White. Um, all, these, we, all these and many other names that are in our hearts, we, we lift up, uh, we commend them to your loving care. We pr- commend them to you for healing, for restoration. Uh, we pray that you would grant them strength of body, peace of mind, and joy of spirit. We pray for the veterans. We pray for those who have served our country uh, as we prepare for Veterans Day. Uh, We pray that you would heal the wounds that war has made in their bodies, minds, and spirits. Be with their families, be with their communities, uh, be be, be with them, and help them to know that you are with them. We pray, we pray for the homeless, those of our congregation and those of our city that you would provide for their needs. For those who, have, who are victims of uh, domestic violence and child abuse that you would provide for them and protect them. We pray 
for our sisters Millie and Dorothy and Nancy. And now, Lord, we lift up those prayers, not named on our lips, but known in our hearts. May we pray in silence. We pray your guidance over those in authority over our country, our commonwealth, and our city. We pray for peace in the city of Philadelphia, this neighborhood of Bridesburg. We pray, uh, especially during this time of transition, Lord, we pray for peace in this, uh, peace in this war-torn world, peace in this deeply divided country. Uh, we pray for peace, Lord. We pray for those. We 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 pray for those uh, for all involved in this time of transition, Lord. Uh, for this is a fragile time. We pray for the churches, especially those of our Bridesburg Council of Churches, uh, that you would that you would help us to share your love and meet the needs of your people. Most especially, and we pray for our country. We pray we pray for our country. Uh, that you would help us to glorify you. We pray that you, again, for, for peace. We pray, uh, we pray for protection. We pray for this congregation, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Sustain us, encourage us, enable us to be a sign of your presence. May all that we say and do be to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, announcements. Um, again, Wednesday's Veterans Day. Um, Next Sunday will be the spring. Next Sunday will be the spring meeting of the uh, fall meeting of the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference. It, it will be online on Zoom. Uh, registration information is on the link in the bulletin. Uh, in honor of Veterans Day, um, wanted to find a. I wanted to sing a song that uh, would reflect Veterans Day, but also that fit the readings, and uh, the, the uh, Battle Hymn of the Republic seemed, se- se- seemed to meet both of those objectives, and so uh, our next hymn is number 610 in the New Century. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, who is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored, and has loosed the fateful lightning of a terrible swift sword. God's truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. God has been there in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps where they build a sacred altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read the righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. God's day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. God has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat and is sifting out the hearts of all before the judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer, and be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marked on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in whose bosom that transfigures you and me. 
as Christ died to make us holy, let us die to make all fun. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. And let us pray. May the invitation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We just got through what seems like an endless election season. The endless calls from phone numbers with unfamiliar area codes, the endless text messages, the endless emails begging for ca campaign contracts, so many campaign emails that the world as I knew it would end if I did not send their preferred candidate at least $25. And I'm grateful not to have the fate of the planet resting on the slender contents of my wallet. <laughs> if, 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 if the fate of the world is depending on my wallet, we are in deep. But for many, the main memory of this week will be waiting as states, as states, states legally prohibited, prohibited by law from processing email, uh, ma ma processing say, mail in ballots ahead of November 3rd, and Pennsylvania was, of course, among these states, began the process of counting millions of mail in ballots. I'm probably not the only person this week who went online multiple times a day to check vote totals from Arizona, Nevada, North Carolina, Georgia, and of course, Pennsylvania. Other presidential elections have taken longer to tally. The Florida vote count in the presidential election was ended on December 9th only by a Supreme Court so controversial that the decision contained language explicitly barring it from ever, ever being used as a precedent in future cases. Even so, for many, this week's waiting has been both unexpected and seemingly endless. We, we pray for the, we pray for the Incom for the incoming pres incumbent uh, president and vice president, we pray, we, pray for, we pray for their families, we pray for this country uh, during this fragile time of transition. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells a parable that involves, and the occasion is a wedding. The British writer L.P. Hartley is remembered for having written, The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. Our gospel is about a foreign country's past, and so weddings are done really differently there. Weddings in America came in two stages. First, there was an agreement, not between bride and groom, but between the parents. This was a day of arranged marriage. And then, sometime later, the groom would fetch the bride for the wedding ceremony to be followed by a banquet that would last for days. We may remember such a banquet in John's gospel, Chapter 2, when Jesus turned water into wine to provide for the wedding family that had run out of wine. In today's gospel reading, we are at the second stage of marriage. The bride, along with the bridesmaids, are waiting for the coming of the groom. We're told that five, described as wise, took extra oil along for their lamps. The other five, described as foolish, did not. And the groom was delayed. We're not told why. Maybe he got stuck in traffic on the Schuylkill Expressway. These things happen. But, the, but it, whatever, the, group, the bridegroom was delayed. And we're told that he was delayed so long that as the hours wore on, all the bridesmaids, wise and foolish alike, all the bridesmaids fell asleep. But at, at midnight, a shout is heard, The bridegroom is coming! All of the bridesmaids trimmed their lamps to light the way for the procession to the wedding hall. After all, it was midnight, after all. The five foolish bridesmaids realized that they were running out of oil and tried to borrow some from their better prepared bridesmaids. But the more prepared bridesmaids had brought along only enough to keep their own lamps burning longer, not to share, share with them. And it wasn't like they could just, and it wasn't like these so-called foolish bridesmaids could just pretend they're it was dark, and the wedding party was apt to notice. So the foolish bridesmaids ran out to buy more oil. 
While they were at the local 7-Eleven buying oil, the bridegroom came, the five prepared bridesmaids processed to the wedding hall, and the wedding went on without the... They arrived later, but found the doors locked against them. Maybe, and they had, this, they had put out money for this oil that they weren't going to use maybe for, for a future wedding. It's not one of Jesus' more warm and fuzzy parables. In fact, it seems like a hard word. One minor slip-up and half the bride's wedding party find themselves locked out of the wedding. We think of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and wonder why his parable couldn't have included some multiplication of oil flasks or such. But that wasn't the point of the parable. This parable seems to have a very clear that actions have consequences and inactions have consequences as well. The, con- the context of the parable is what Jesus, what Bible call- scholars call Jesus' little apocalypse. When Jesus speaks of things to come, specifically about his return at the end of time, he taught the natural disasters, great hardship and persecution, and he taught the disciples to be ready. Stepping back one more to provide some context for the context, Matthew's gospel was written several decades after Jesus returned to the Father. The first disciples thought that Jesus would return very soon, that they would live to see it. But decades passed, and some of the first generation of believers died, some from persecution, some of old age. And so the writer of Matthew's gospel remembered this parable of Jesus to encourage his readers to remain faithful and prepared in timeline. What does it mean to be prepared for Jesus' return? Some churches spend lots of time reading about the end times, looking for signs of the end times, speculating about whether this or that event or person foreshadows the end times. I remember early at my time at Emmanuel, there was an elderly radio preacher by the name of Harold Camping who said that the rapture, when believers would be caught up into heaven as described in our reading, and we're back, uh, uh, there was an elderly radio preacher named Harold Camping who said that the rapture, when believers would be caught up into heaven as described in a reading from 1 Thessalonians, would take place on May 21st, 2011, at 6 p.m. local time. People would be, believers would be swept up into heaven by time zone. Then the world was supposed to end five, the world was supposed to end five months later on October 21st, 2011. Now, I should mention that that Camping had previously predicted the end of the world in 1994, and that date had come and gone. But in 2011, May 21st was a Saturday, and I knew people who thought that the preceding Sunday, May 15th, the last Sunday service for the church ever, save for the hymns, and the sermon had best be memorable because there would be no more. I told folks, see you next Sunday, and of course, next Sunday came. October 21st was a Friday, and of course, the following Sunday came then as well. And now in 2020, we're nine years on from then. Camping went to be with his Lord in December of 2013. The radio net, family radio, survives him. I don't think setting timelines for the end times is what Jesus is asking us to do. In fact... Just a few verses before, in Matthew chapter 24, day or hour, no one, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So certainly, if Jesus didn't know the date or the hour of his return, neither did Harold Camping. The point of Jesus' parable. The five bridesmaids were called wise, not because they had correctly guessed the time of the bridegroom's arrival. In fact, they, along with the others, had fallen asleep. What it meant to be prepared was to be was faithfully to be up and doing at any time, so that when Jesus returned, he would find his followers faithfully speaking and acting in his name. Humor aside, there's a kernel of truth there. In the same section of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus described a chief servant whose master had gone away. He said, that, "But the master would punish a, who used the master's absence as an occasion to party." and beat up the other servants. So Jesus, Jesus used the words, a thief and the neck, a surprise inspection. Or, we're either ready when it comes, or we're not. 
And the best way to be ready is to be, con- is to be consistent in being faithful. And, and then hurry up and be faithful then, but to be faithful when that time comes. I was reminded, one of our members called this week to remind me that this Wednesday is Veterans Day. Originally Armistice Day, month. Armistice Day was hoped to mark the end of the war, war to end all wars. Sadly, that prediction, of course, did not pan out. Veterans Day provided some interest to Jesus' teaching to be ready, and also to our reading of Joshua's words to his followers, choose this day whom you will serve. Of course, I did not serve in the military. Even so, whether we've served or not, I think we can all sense that those who serve undergo a great deal of... Uncle Sam doesn't just send random folks... doesn't just send random folks off the street into war with a uniform, a rifle, a compass, and a road map and say, go figure it out. I'm told on service so that when an attack comes, the response is automatic. If bullets are flying in my direction and my weapon is empty, I don't want to be fumbling around. There's nothing I can do in my sleep if I'm in that situation. And in the military, there's a clear chain of command. There's no question of whom we will serve this day. For those who serve, that decision has already been made for them. It would seem that military service would provide a clarity of command and of journey masters and are often with And maybe these comparisons can give us some level of the commitment demanded by the Lord, that our, commandment to, that our commitment to respond to God's command is on when the enemy of our soul attacks, we, re- we respond faithfully. In the military, there's a clear chain of command. In our civilian life, Many masters clamor for our attention, demanding access to our time, our talent, our treasure. Masters promise pleasure. Buy this, go there, do this, and your life will be so much better. While others threaten us if we don't. If you don't do this, you'll get fired, you'll be ostracized, you'll be verged to the pro- We are faced every day with a choice of whom we will serve. And for us, service means love of God and love of neighbor, which are inseparable. And this is key. Many say they serve the Lord, but relentlessly oppress their neighbors who are unlike them, which means they are serving neither God, neither neighbor, nor the Lord. I hate this. Some, some on the more conservative end of the spectrum more closely resemble the wicked servant in Jesus' parable, drunk on political power and beating up verbally. In this, God is neither served nor glorified. In fact, such behavior is a major reason that the vast majority among younger generations have washed their hands. Not that they hate Jesus. Indeed, they find younger generations find the Jesus of the Gospels incredibly attractive. But they are repelled, made nauseous by many fake Christians who presume to serve fake. If we are not prepared to walk the walk of love, We shouldn't try to talk the talk of faith. If we are not prepared to walk, choose this day whom you will serve, Joshua said to those about to enter the land of promise. Keep awake, for you know not the day nor the hour, Jesus. May we look to Jesus not only as the Savior of our souls, but as the Lord of our lives. May we be prepared, always ready, to testify to Jesus' lives. And where where Jesus leads, may we follow. Amen. Please join me in praying as our Savior taught us. Our Father, thy kingdom come as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Holy Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth from this place, this virtue, this sanctuary of the Spirit. Go forth from your homes into this coming week to love and serve the Lord. Go forth from this sanctuary of the Spirit. Go forth from your homes. Go forth into the coming week in peace to serve. Go forth. Go forth with your lamps trimmed and burning with the love of God. Go forth with your lamps trimmed and burning with the love of God. Carry to keep your, even in the face of delays, of opposition, of 
whatever circumstance we may meet, be prepared with love. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love more. Amen. 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 Our final hymn is hymn number 93. Arise, the kingdom is at hand. The king is drawing nigh. Faithful band, God most high. Look up, ye souls, way down with care. The sovereign is not far. Your despair, star. Look up, ye drooping hearts, today. The king is very now, is here. Hope on ye broken hearts at last. The king comes in us, yes, when we lay wrapped in night. O oh, rich, the gifts thou bringest us, the weak, compare that thus can foes and sinners seek. For this we raise a gladsome voice, on high to the thanks rejoice, glorious throne.